Good morning and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 7th of January 2019 and the time has just gone 9.35 GMT. Uh, we've had a fairly quiet start to this session this week. Um, in Asia overnight, um, most Asian stock markets uh, finished a little bit higher, uh, just, just on the uh, on the back of the, the announcement that uh, Chinese and U.S. Um, trade negotiators are to actually hold trade talks uh, between today and tomorrow. Now, there's been no real kind of update or progress on that front, uh, but just the very announcement um, of the back end of last week that the trade talks would take place on the 7th and 8th of January lifted, lifted our investor, sent, investor sentiment. So we, we, we finished a little bit higher in Asia overnight. We started positive, a little positive. Uh, here in Europe this morning, but equity markets in Europe have uh, turned over, have turned over on themselves again. Bearing in mind, we did have a very strong finish to a very volatile week last week. Uh, looking back at Friday's moves, uh, we, between a very, very um, positive jobs update from the United States and also some less hawkish, some could even say slightly kind of more neutral comments from Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, that helped equity markets uh, finish in quite a high note. Uh, just to remind you, the jobs data came in well above in, um, the non-farm payrolls figure. The headline figure came in well above expectations, 212,000 versus the 177,000 that were expected. Uh, on a year-on-year -year basis, average earnings came in at 3.2%. It's joint uh, highest in a, in a decade. That's probably the most important figure of the actual update, uh, given that when U.S. workers earn, earn more, they tend to spend more. And so, so it really can underline kind of the strength of the U.S. economy. Um, in, on, on Friday afternoon, we heard from Jerome Powell, uh, who stated that the, the Federal Reserve um, were going to be a bit patient when it comes to their planning their monetary policy, and also he stated that, that their policy is flexible. Uh, so this, this is a bit of a backtrack in, compar in comparison to what we've heard in recent weeks and months, whereby the Federal Reserve previously seemed to be kind of gung ho on kind of moving forward with uh, tightening their tightening monetary policy, kind of even though. They were kind of predicting a decline in growth and inflation in 2019. So that backtrack or that kind of move from slightly being less hawkish to kind of more and slightly more neutral, the elevated equity markets on top of that. Uh, it's a fairly quiet day today in terms of actual economic uh, and corporate announcements. So take a look now at some of the, the major markets and see what the moves are going on. Starting off with the uh, with the FTSE 100. Uh, so as you can see here, the FTSE 100 since May has been a classic example of a downward trend, nice series of lower lows and lower highs, but we are well off the lows of, uh, of late December. Uh, uh, we, we can see here that since around um, late December, the market has been, has, has been moving higher. We can see, we can see a nice increase in positive momentum here on, on the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram. So the market is edging higher. And like, but like I said, the, the, the FTSE opened higher, higher this morning and has turned over on itself. So this upward move that we're seeing here today uh, we may may turn over on itself or may kind of push a little higher before we potentially look to kind of fall into the wider downward trend because keep in mind it's been a fairly obvious downward trend uh, for a number of months now. Uh, if we do look to push on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this blue line here, the fifth day moving average, which could which which just comes into play at 6,921. Notice how it managed to act at resistance here in December and also in September. And if the metric has actually had resistance in the past or support, it, it makes it more likely that it will do, will do so in the future. Now, there's no guarantees, but it's it's possibility. And a move beyond that could then bring the psychologically important 7,000 mark into play. Now, even if you do go to 7,000, the market still could look to turn over on itself because bearing in mind, it's been a fairly obvious downward trend for a number of months. If the market does turn over on itself uh, in the near term, we could be looking heading back down towards the 6,750 region this area here. And a move below that would then bring uh, the most recent low of 6,536 into play. And if we go below that, we'd be potentially looking heading back down towards this region here in around the 6,435. Taking a look now what's going on over in Germany in the DAX. Once again, a classic example of a downward trend. It's been a fairly aggressive downward trend since about June. Uh, but this candle here, um, major move to the upside on Friday, could be construed as a bearish, sorry, a bullish, a bullish engulfing. So this 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 jolt higher here could signal we are, we are looking for a bit of a rebound in the near term. And if you do look to push on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the 11,000 mark. It's a big psychological number, but you'll notice notice you also notice how. 
just north of 11,000 uh, in, uh, in November and also in October, just north of it, that region did act as support. So we, we could see a scenario where all support might become new resistance. Uh, if you do manage to press on above uh, the 11,000 mark, resistance may come into play at this blue line here, the 50 moving average at 11,117. When the market rallied in early December, it didn't quite get there, but it did ma manage to act as resistance a number of occasions uh, back in September. So keep an eye out for that, that metric. If the market does turn over on itself yet again, we could be looking at heading back down towards this, this uh, the, the December low of uh, 10,277. And if you go below that, we could be looking at heading up, down towards the next big psychological number of 10,000. Uh, the US markets are in better shape. They're not in amazing shape, but they're in better shape than their European counterparts. So starting off with the Dow Jones, uh, as we can see here, it's had a fairly aggressive uh, push higher uh, since late December. And the market has been edging higher. And even this morning, the Dow futures uh, managed to take out uh, well, the very recent high. So we are continuing on to edge higher. Uh, if you do look to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the 24,000 region or perhaps up, up to the 50 moving average at 24,484. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this trend, this, this trend line here, uh, this trend line which connects the lows of February, 2006, February 2018 of the lows of March, April. Uh, and notice how it acted as support on a number of occasions a few months ago. So all support might become new resistance. Um, that, that's not to say that the US market couldn't rally couldn't rally in the near term before potentially uh, turning lower again. If the market does manage to turn over on itself, it could be looking at back down towards 23,000. Uh, and then below that, the next big year to keep an eye for will be the will be the uh, the late, oh, sorry, the early the early uh, January low. This 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 area here at um at uh, 22,587. And I'll move below that, we'll bring this back down potentially to 22,000. And then below that. We'll be looking at potentially retesting the December lows. It's a reasonably similar situation with the S&P 500. So if we're starting off, if you take the old trend line from the lows of February 2016 to the lows of November 2016, we get this trend line here, which as you can see was respected well on a number of occasions in October and also in November. Uh, October and November, but as you can see, the market had a firm break below it in December. And man, but, but since late December has managed to stage a fairly decent comeback. And similar situation with the Dow Jones, the market's moving higher, so we and we can see an increase in positive momentum on the MACD indicator, the MACD Instagram. If the market does move the push on higher, we could be looking heading up towards 26,000 or perhaps the 50 moving average. At, uh, sorry, I said 26,000. I meant to say 2,600. Um, we could look, we, we could look to run to resistance at this blue line here, uh, 2,640 which also nearly coincides with the, with the previous trend line support. So that, that trend line may become resistance uh, in the near term. If the market does manage to turn over on itself again, uh, we could look at finding support in around the 2,500 area, 2,500 or 2,400, and then below, move below that would bring in the most recent low of 2,319 into play. So we've been talking a lot about markets that have been going down. Let's talk about a market that's been going up recently, gold. Uh, we can see here gold has, has basically had a slow and steady recovery from, uh, from let's say, mid-April through, say, October. And then ever since kind of about early November, the gold market has really started to kind of to take off. A nice series of higher highs and higher lows. It shied away from the 1300 mark uh, on Friday, partially because of the strong job, job support and particular uh, the, the earnings component. So there's been recently, uh, there's been a fairly strong inverse relationship between the gold market and the US dollar. In light of Mr. Powell's comments a couple of hours, well, nearly two hours after the non from payroll support, the US dollar has softened and, 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 and uh, which assisted the gold market. If you do look to push on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 1,300. And if you go beyond that, the next day to keep an eye out for will be the, um, the mid May high um, of uh, 1,326. If the market does turn over on itself, we may find some support in around the 1,275 region or 1,265 region here, or perhaps even down as low as 1,250. Take a look now at what's going on in the oil market. I'll start off with Brent. 
I'm intentionally starting off with Brent on the weekly can on the weekly chart, so you can take a look take a look at this candle here. So the oil market had a very aggressive sell-off uh, between October and mid December or mid to late December. We can see here this candle here um, could be construed as a bullish engulfing. Um, so we could be looking at having a push higher in the near term, a bounce back from here. I'll take a look now on the daily chart. You can see here, just to get a better view, it's basically effectively essentially bounced off of um, support at the $50 mark, maybe just below that, 42, 49 spot, 92. If you do look the push on higher from here, we could be looking heading towards the $60 mark. And if you go beyond 60, we could be looking heading towards 63 uh, spot, 35. But we can't ignore the wider downward trend. And if the, if the wider downward trend does continue, we could be looking heading back down towards 50 region. Or if you have an aggressive move below that, we could be looking heading back down towards 44 spot, 26. I take a look now at WTI, and to be fair, it's a fairly similar situation. The markets are fairly well correlated. Similar move here on we've seen on WTI, whereby aggressive sell-off between early October and mid December. This this candle here, notice um, notice the, notice how there's a very uh, long wick on this candle here. It's an indication of indecision, followed by a very positive and very a very bullish yeah, candle here. Once again, uh, very good, very bullish candle here. Which would indicate we could see uh, a, a correction, a bounce back. If the market does manage to push in higher from here, we could be looking heading up towards the $50 uh, region on WTI. Take a look now on the weekly chart. If we if we do manage to kind of push on higher from here, we could be looking at dragging 50, 50 bucks. Beyond that, we could be looking up towards the late November highs of in around the 54 spot 14. But once again, the wider aggressive downward trend can't be ignored. If the market does turn over itself, you could be looking heading, heading back down towards 41 spots, 41 spot 74. I'll take a look now at a couple of currency pairs. So as I mentioned, we have a bit of weakness in the US dollar um, on, the, on the back of Mr. Powell's comments. So the euro dollar has been in a broadly speaking a downward trend for a number of months, but in the recent sessions, we have seen a bit of a move to the upside. It hasn't really kind of aggressively move to the upside a whole lot um, but it's nonetheless in the very near term we could see the market head up towards the kind of 115 115 10 region uh, and a move beyond that might bring the kind of 116 area into play if the markets the wider trend if the wider downward trend does continue we could be looking any back down towards 113 or perhaps even low as the recent lows in at one spot 12 16 let's take a look now at pound versus the us dollar Pound dollar is in a, in a similar situation whereby, broadly speaking, the trend has been very much at the downside, uh, particularly since, uh, say, this, since uh, early November. But uh, once again, the softness in the US dollar has given the pound a bit of assistance recently. The pound is creeping higher uh, since early December. If you look to take out one spot 28.15, we could be looking heading up towards the 130 region. Uh, but if the wider downward trend kicks in, or even if there's uncertainty in relation to Brexit kicks in, as there's a, it's likely that the, that the British Parliament will vote on Theresa May's deal next week. If, if there's any negative news around that, or the sign that we're heading towards a no-deal Brexit, be it on purpose or accidental, um, I think we could see a further weakness uh, in the pound, and it's going to take us back down towards the recent, well, the recent lows of at uh, one spot 24.31. Taking a quick look at the um, what's going on, we can expect this week on the week ahead. Uh, the weekend article can be found on our website, uh, cmcmarkets.com, the news and analysis section. Um, you can scroll down here. Tomorrow, well, between Tuesday and Friday of this week, we've been quite a few uh, UK retailers updating, updating us with our Christmas statements or third quarter, or quarterly numbers. So everything from Marks and Spencers, Morrison's, Sainsbury's, Tesco's, a, a good view of the uh, the big big supermarkets. Uh, the card company, uh, AO World and Mothercare, they all produce numbers. On Wednesday, we will have enough, we'll have the Fed minutes from the meeting in December. Um, but keep in mind, we did hear, we have heard recently from Jerome Powell, whose who's, who's, who's most recent comments have been a bit less hawkish than the, than the, than the statement that was released uh, in, in mid-December. On Wednesday, we have an update for the Bank of Canada. Keep in mind, the Bank of Canada often like to kind of stay a couple of paces behind the Fed Reserve, seeing as the Fed hiked in December, four hikes in, for the Fed in 2018, we could see the Bank of Canada just as a way of actually kind of keeping a bit of kind of catch up 
we could see the Fed, we could see Bank of Canada hike on Wednesday. Um, and then on Wednesday, we also have third quarter numbers from Bed Bath and Beyond. Once again, it ties in with the kind of wider retail sector. The U.S. housing market has been slowing down, so we could see people be, be willing to kind of spend less on kind of big ticket items. And on Friday, we have U.S. inflation figures, which would be a good measure of demand in the U.S., in particular in light of the very good uh, earnings figures we've seen from the U.S. only last Friday. And as I said, when U.S. workers earn more, they tend to spend more. Uh, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And um, that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.